But let's talk a little bit about some changes that have happened with the film markets. Okay. Like what? Like what's going on with film markets today? Well, first of all, for the past two years have been a disaster. Um, almost all of them have had to go virtual. Um, we went to, to, well, last year for Cannes, it was supposed to be in May, which is when it's always it is. And it's going to be again this year. It's supposed to be live in May. Well, so few people were able to travel to France that they made it virtual and it was a disaster. It wasn't very good. So they decided, okay, well, we'll move it up and we'll do it live in July because we think COVID will be gone. By then. <laughs> so we traveled to France and we had a nice big booth up on the main floor of uh, the Palais. <laughs> and unfortunately... We were one of eight companies that went from the U.S. Eight. That's it. Mm. And then normally I would say there were probably 500 booths on the three floors. Well, they only had one floor and one row of booths. <laughs> it was, you know, just like it just was a disaster. Uh, and and I, so and the same AFM this year, the, the biggest problem was AFM this year was that when I was in my virtual booth, everyone in Europe and Asia was sleeping. <laughs> so, you know, so that, that didn't work either. Uh, the, the beauty of actually physically going to a market is that everybody's in the same time zone and you can talk and meet with everyone, right? That's mm -hmm. the value of it is to, to meet people in person and develop relationships for us. The markets have always been about that for forging new partnerships. Okay. We've never been huge at foreign sales, uh, though we have, a, we have quite a few companies in like Asia. We sell a lot to Thailand, Korea. Uh, you know, we, we had huge business with China going until the Chinese and the Americans, mm. <laughs> their relationship has greatly deteriorated. Uh, so unfortunately that all stopped. Uh, but what was valuable for us was the ability to, to identify what companies were forward thinking in each territory. So what we did in July uh, was to meet many new streaming partners because one of our goals besides the MCNs is to develop a relationship with the best streamer in every territory. Because a lot of these territories are quite protective, you know, of their entertainment business and their audience and what content gets fed to their people. They're very protective of that. So, for example, uh, Australia is there's one streaming company and it's called Stan. And it's it's, you know, I mean, Netflix is there, but Stan, you know, is the Australian Netflix and if you don't, if you're not on stand, you're not going to do so great in Australia for streaming. So for, for us, marketing markets have always been about that. Right. The other thing, the other big thing that's changed is that people, uh, buyers were looking for all rights. Now for for small Indies, theatrical, foreign theatrical is not really a reality, right? It really isn't. Uh, so for small indies, it used to be about DVD deals, right? And some broadcast, but broadcast and DVD were where indies could do well in foreign, you know, territories with foreign buyers. Now it seems like the only rights that the buyers are really, really interested in are streaming rights. <laughs> okay. Well, I, um, are you seeing like um, with indies, with smaller films, are you seeing any kind of like broadcast deals, like say like IFC or Sundance, or is that kind of like, like unicorn situation? We, we're we not. I mean, we, I mean, I think for, for indie rights in particularly, we really aren't distributing films, say over two and a half million, maybe. Mm. That's kind of tops for us. And, and, you know, I think the most of the, uh, the 
the the cable channels are looking for content that has somebody in it you know, right. or somebody behind it you know that you know so they're a little more expensive they're probably more five to ten million dollar films or five to twenty million dollar films that so makes sense. we don't have a lot of films that uh, uh are you know attractive to them per se Right. So, but you know, I mean, a lot of a lot of the distributors that are out there do. I mean, there are a lot of distributors that only take on five films a year, and they are films with names, and they can market those names to foreign territories and broadcasters, and you know, so. But also, what I think is changing about that is now everybody's starting to focus on creating original content 